Hey, what up, YouTube? Back with the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan, a Knicks fan, and yes, the Knicks did it. We broke that three-game losing streak, beating the Cavs 102 to 81. The Cavs came into the game um, number two in steals. Um, not only they number two in steals, they led the league in points on turnovers. So the Knicks really had to take care of the ball tonight. Actually, they finished the game with 14 turnovers. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. The um, Cavs had 13 turnovers, so it was basically going back and forth. But in the beginning of the first, the first quarter, the Knicks, they looked like they was going to give this game away. Just to be honest, if you watch the game, it did look like the Knicks was about to give this game away. But um, quickly, and Rivers came in in the, fourth, in the first quarter, and it wasn't exciting, but they, they did their thing, and we took the lead into the second quarter. Um... What can I say? Let me see. Let me look at something. Forgive me for me. Let me just look at something right here. Yeah, as I said, the Cavs was, you know, number two in turnovers, taking away the ball away from their opponents. And the Knicks, you know, they like to turn the ball over a lot. So we had to keep the turnover to a minimum. As I just said before, we only had 14 turnovers. The Cavs had 13 turnovers. So it was a close game in the first quarter and the second quarter. But... Like I said, Rivers and um, Quigley came out. They gave us that little bit, of, little bit of punch that made us take the lead into the second quarter. The Knicks was doing their thing for a second, but it was still, it was still a back-and-forth game in the second quarter. This just was moving back and forth. Not until late into the third quarter, the Knicks made a move. But before that, the Knicks didn't score like almost eight minutes into the first quarter. So that's what really made me nervous because of the way they was moving the ball in the first quarter. And I'm going to get into it. Everybody want to know, but, you know, Quigley had a, a spectacular night. I'm going to save it down the line. But he got in the first quarter, him and Austin Rivers, as I said before. And they kind of, you know, kept us, they kept, us, they kept us right there. You know what I'm saying? They kept us right there. And the other players, they went and they did their things. But Quigley and R.J. Barrett was the man at night. But I'll get down to them, too. I always tell you R.J. Barrett is going to be a superstar. And he's proven me right every other night. Just by the way he's playing, even when the Knicks lose, and even like the other game, the other night, he's I think he only scored eight points, but he still was active. He was still trying to do things, you know what I'm saying? But it was a loss, and I like I said, if he had scored at least 15 points, we would have won that game. But still, he had an off night for the season. Right now, he's averaging at least 19 points per game. Well, at least in the last eight games, he's not he's averaging 18, 19 points. And that's good for a sophomore, you know what I'm saying? So we're getting the R.J. Barrett, but let's talk about the game. Let's get into what the Cavs did and what they didn't do. Um, early in the first quarter, the Knicks had four turnovers when the first six minutes of the game. I got a little nervous, I'm being honest with you. But like I said, Quigley and Rivers came and they gave us that spark. Saxon, he came to the game averaging 25 points. And at one point, it looked like he was going to try to take over the game, but... The Knicks defense, like I said in my last video, and I'm going to say again in this video, the Knicks are ranked number one in defense. And even when we have bad games and the games we do lose, they do show that we are number one in defense. It's just our offense is not keeping up with our defense. We have to, um, we have to do better on offense. I've been hearing rumors about the Knicks, about the trade for Derrick Rose. I don't know if that's a good look, but if we do trade for Derrick Rose, I hope it's Kevin Knox. Because once again, Kevin Knox had... He ain't had no points. I'm be honest. Let me check it. I mean, before I even say that, let me just check it out because I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think he had no points. I'm going to be honest. Yep. In eight minutes, Kevin Knox had zero points. And when you watch his game, sometimes he looked lost on defense and on offense. Before I was saying that the, you know, the players had to get Kevin Knox the ball, but Kevin Knox had to put himself in a position that when he get the ball, he's going to score. And he's just basically on the court looking lost. So I don't know. If we do trade for rules, I hope we package Kevin Knox and maybe a second round pick. I don't mean, I mean, Derrick Rose is an old player, but he still have much more in him than Kevin Knox do. I, I'm, I don't mean to be so critical of Kevin Knox, but his last few games, he really shown us nothing. He's, he's degressing, not progressing. So I don't know what we're going to do there. But getting back to the game, like I said, let's talk about Saxon. Saxon, like I said, he averaged 25 points. The Knicks held him down to 17 points in 35 minutes, five assists. I mean, he was trying to do his thing, but 
like I said, the Knicks have no one defense, and I don't know, the Cavs was making, I mean, wasn't making shots, they was missing dunks, they was just missing, and like I said, I contributed to the Knicks defense, but you know, sometimes you just get, you get lucky, and the Cavs came in, I think, what, the Cavs are ranked number, yeah, they ranked number seven, the Knicks is number eight now, where we've been, and we right in that position, so I don't know, you know what I'm saying, we got to do better. I hope in the next two, three games we come out with wins, push our, push our rankings up in, in the standings because the East is kind of packed tight. The whole league is kind of packed tight. It's like if, you, if one team get on a two, two or three game win streak, they can be in third or fourth position and ranking in the East. So, you know, that's how it is right now. But I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm being honest. I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm saying, Drummond, the last game you seen, we played the Cavs. Drummond basically had his way with our sentence. But this night, we held him down to four points. He did have 15 rebounds. So, I, you know, it ain't like he wasn't doing nothing. But offensively, we did our thing. Like I said, the Cavs was missing shots. But it was more to the Knicks defense. And, you know, just getting that for the players. You know what I'm saying? Contesting every shot that they could. I mean, the refs was letting them play. A few, a few plays I thought the refs could have called even against the Knicks or even against the Cavs, but they was letting them play. So, I don't know. Maybe they're getting back to the 1980s, getting a little rough and tumble. Who knows? But um, like I said, he uh, scored four, four, four points and 15 rebounds, two assists in 24 minutes. Uh, they actually had got their start and crew back. Everybody's back except for Kevin Love. He'd been out basically the whole season. Uh, Garland was back, and Garland came, and he, he had a decent game. He scored 24 points, three rebounds, but he's supposed to be a point guard slash shooting guard. Him and Saxon got to do better, but he only had one assist in 29 minutes. I'm not going to complain, but that's the other team. As long as we doing our thing on the other team and we get a win, hey, I don't care what the other player do. If you're on my team, I want you to succeed. If you're not, keep putting up them numbers. I mean, 24 points is good, but one assist when you're supposed to be a point guard, you're not getting nobody involved. As I said, they was missing. Um, what's this guy they just tra traded from um, the Nets? Yo, I don't know why I do. I should have wrote his name down, but I do know his name because I'm a Net basher, even though I'm from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a New York. I'm not a Brooklyn Nets fan. I'm a New York Knicks fan. I roll with the Knicks. I mean, if the Nets was to make the playoffs, I would have to roll with them because they're in New York. It's just like if the Giants make the playoffs, I roll with them because I'm a Jet fan. Uh, I, I was reluctant to roll with Buffalo, even though they're a New York team. I just don't like Buffalo. I'm going to be honest with you. But let's get back to basketball. Julius Randle, he started off slow. He didn't really have a good night. But I'm really, telling, I'm really thinking it's coming for fatigue. But because he played 35 minutes, but he had 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. Six assists. I mean, that's still good, you know what I'm saying? Because he is our um, leading scorer. Basically... Our leading assist guy, he doing basically all right now other than rebounding. Um, yeah, but he had an off night. So, like, it, it, you know, it's just, it, I'll take it because lately he's been giving us all. Like I said in a couple of videos before, videos a goal before that, you know, I thought Randall was a selfish player, but Randall came out this season to show to be a really different player. Um, like I said, yo, if... If the Knicks make the playoff, they got to give Randolph the MVP. They got to give him. I don't care if we make the HC playoff, they got to give Randolph the MVP. Either him or R.J. Barrett, because R.J. Barrett is playing very well as, but I don't think they'll give it to a sophomore. So if we make the playoff, they got to give, they got to give Randall, Randall the goddamn MVP. I, that's just my feeling. Like I said, it's the Knicks cave, and this is just an opinion show, and it's my opinion, so that's my opinion. Let's get, like I said, Kevin Knox, eight, zero points, eight minutes. I, I'm just going to skip past them stats. I already got into him. I don't know. I wish I can show. I wish they had open practice so I can just come and say something to the man. But um, RJ Barrett, like I said before you, before, he's going to be a superstar. And he keep proving me right, even in the games that we lose. But tonight we won, so that's even better. He, uh, he scored 24 points. He had five rebounds, three assists, two assists. Let me get Bo back. He had 24 points, five rebounds, three assists, and two steals, two turnovers, and 40 minutes. <clears throat> like I said, I'll take two, no two turnovers from anybody, you know what I'm saying? Because 
when you run up and down in court and you're trying to get everybody involved and I mean yourself, you make mistakes, you know what I'm saying? If you can be in the league for 15 years, you still gonna have at least two turn turnovers a game and some veterans average one turnover a game. So two turnovers, you can't knock him, but he had a really good game. As I said, you know, he's really, like his free throws is coming along and he's shooting his threes. Yo, everything is everything is falling with his three pointers. You know what I'm saying? He's 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 improved, you know what I'm saying? So I wanna see how they snub him this year. I wanna see how they snub RJ Barrett this year. That's all I wanna see. How they gonna snub him this year. But let's get to the man of the hour. And that is Emmanuel Quickly. And as I call him, Isaiah Thomas 2.0. Quickly finished the game with 25 points, five rebounds, three assists, five or eight. Five from eight shooting from downtown in 25 minutes. Now, he had 25 points in 25 minutes. So that's basically a point per minute. And he's not starting. I'm not even going to talk about what Alfred Payton had. I'm not even going to get into Alfred Payton's stats, but you can look it up. Because sometimes even he had a good stretch where he played four or five games decently, but... Even in them games, his assist numbers low. He had one assist this game just to top it off. I'm not even going to get into points because it's disgusting. Well, at least he scored more than Kevin Knox, but it's still just disgusting for him to be our starting point guard and doing what he do. I mean, his defense is okay and probably one of the reasons why we're number one in defense, but still, he's our starting point guard. He got to get our players in better position to score. You can't be starting the game and only having one, one assist. I don't care how you end the game. And as, as I said, you, as you see, Quigley may not be starting the games, but he's ending the games. With a couple of mistakes other than the last two games, Peyton was in. I don't know if Quigley was a little overwhelmed, maybe frustrating that he's losing time to such an inferior player to him. Because Quigley, I don't know, is a very good player. The scouts didn't have him rated as a point guard. They labeled him as a shooting guard. But... He, who he played in, in Kentucky, he had two other point guards in front of him. Hagen, Hagens, 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 and Maxley, Tyrese Maxley. So basically, he was like a spot up jump shooter. Them two guys would basically felicitate the ball, bring it up the court, and quickly would go in the corner or whatever. But he still had that floater in college, but he was more of a spot up shooter. I think shooting 39%, taking a, a spot up jump shot. But that's still a number which he. He was hitting on a, on a good basis. So, like I said, they asked is, is quickly our starting point guard in the future. I said it in two, two, three videos ago. Matter of fact, at the beginning of the season, we found our starting point guard. Nobody wanted to believe me. When I went on other people's pay channels and I would make this comment, I would get a strong argument saying why he wasn't and who we needed. And as the season goes along, I'm hearing and seeing them saying people calling out quickly as if he was a savior, not Jesus Christ, but a savior of basketball of the New York Knicks. But like I said, he's a very good point guard slash shooting guard because he does have a tendency to shoot when he should pass. But um, at the same time, it's who Thibodeau put on the floor with him. I really like when he put the starters with him because when he put the starters with him, Randall, Randall, um, I don't know why I have a habit of saying Randolph when I know it's um, Julius Randall. Randall, Barrett, 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 um, Mitchell Robinson, and now they're starting my man um, Alec Burks. But when he put him, when, they, when he's on the floor with them guys, he really do well because the team had to respect it that the starters on the floor and they opened up the court more for him. And when they opened the court for him, it actually opened the court for everybody because when he get open, if his man ain't there, the other, the other defender that they try to rush him, if they leave their man, he passes it off, boom. But quickly is the man. And he had one play where he just totally faked the whole defense out. And who, who's this guy? Okor. Everybody wanted the Knicks to take. He had him going this way, and he went that way. And I ain't going to lie, Okor did the same thing to R.J. Barrett. And I was like, you're R.J. Barrett. You've been in the league two years. You shouldn't have fell, fell for that okie doke move. But quickly caught the, everybody. Everybody went this way. He went around, came with Jared. That's his name, Jared. Jared came over, tried to stop him, got the foul.
But the way to play with design, I had to give it to Tibbs. It was a well-designed play. Even if he didn't have the lane to go to the um, basket, he had either a screen pass to R.J. Barrett or Randall at the top of the court for the three. I don't know if Randall would have took the three, but that was the dynamics of the play where Randall was positioned here, Barrett was there, which forced... Um, I don't, I don't forgot the dude name already. Jab to come up and play, but by that little bit of spacing, quickly got that move. He came, got a dunk. Now he got a dunk. He got a foul on the play, which was excellent. He almost had a three-point play, but after the coach um, Cavaliers, he challenged it. Which tip? Which that's my only knock. I know I call Tibbetto a super coach. My only knock on him is that he doesn't challenge plays enough. He challenged him every now and then, but not enough, and that's my only knock on him. The guy challenged the play, and he stopped a four-point play. Quickly was, quickly was already at the line, ready to shoot. I was already ready to clap and everything, but, hey, it is what it is. But like I said, quickly should be starting. Not only should he be starting, quickly is one of six rookies that's averaging double figures. And, and to top that off, he's playing less minutes than them, than them other five rookies. So this is what I meant about... My last video when I said the Knicks should rock with Quickly for one or two years and see what they got. But we see what we have right now. Quickly is doing his thing. Quickly should be starting. But when they interviewed Super Coach Tibbs last night and I was listening to him, I kind of got a sense of what he's doing because the Knicks get stagnant sometimes. And we do need that spark off the bench. We do need that spark off the bench. So... I see quickly getting six man of the year of the year award. And not only that, he should be getting rookie of the award. Because I'm being honest with you, because like I said, as out of all the six rookies that's averaging double figures, all of them rookies are playing more minutes than quickly. You know what I'm saying? He's coming out, he's basically getting scrapped. You know what I'm saying? But he's still averaging double figures. He's our rookie. Nobody thought, you know what I'm saying? They have him going, the scouts have quickly going in the late second round. I'm just going to, you know, I'm forgetting to tell y'all, you know, don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, comment, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people on my Facebook channel too, uh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all watch the video, but y'all don't hit subscribe. So hit that subscribe button. Do me that favor. I'm going to be getting out of here, cause it, but I hear soon, but I'm just going to say one more thing about quickly. He is New York Knicks starting point guard of the future. That's all I got to say. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Like I said, this is opinion channel. This is opinion channel, and this is my opinion from a New York lover, from the Knicks lover. Let's go Knicks! And I'm telling you, watch quickly, watch the Knicks, and see what you're missing. The Knicks is doing their thing this year. I know our record is only we. Like I said, we're number eight. We're 9-11, but that's way better than what we was last year. So, I'm hyped. I'm still hyped for the season. I still think we're going to make the playoffs, as I said, because we're looking very good. Like, we have two good, two good rookies. I mean, Obi, Obi Toppin is not scoring, like, in high number as quickly as, but he moves around the court. He puts himself in position, but he just don't get the ball. I'm not going to lie. I was, I, I was very frustrated because... It, he was open like three or four times, but he had super dunks, and they didn't get him the ball. But it is what it is, so that's that's just what it is. So I'm going to end this video with stay healthy, God bless, and peace. Let's go Knicks. Until next time, keep watching.